In this video, I am going to talk about the method of estimation. So till now, I have told you that we collect a sample data. So this is a sample that we have for this particular video. And then we convert this sample data into a scatter plot. And after that, our goal is to fit a line in this scatter plot, which we call sample regression line or line of best fit. I have already given you some intuition related to how to fit a sample regression line. So basically the intuition was that try to fit a line in such a manner that the difference between the points that are lying on the line and these actual data points, that is these blue points, should be as minimum as possible. So let me try to draw a rough line over here using the intuition that we developed. So if I try to draw the rough line, then it will look something like this. If you want, you can also extend this line till the vertical axis if you want to visualize the intercept as well. So this is the line of best fit that we have and this is just a rough line of best fit. And as I have already discussed in one of my earlier videos, this blue dot that you see over here, this is the first actual Y value that we have. So we can call it Y1. In our data, this value is equal to 83. This dot is Y2. So the second actual value of Y. This is Y3. This is Y4. And this is Y5. So these blue dots are representing the actual Y values. And now let's also take a look at the fitted Y values. So on this axis, we have the X variable and on this axis, we have the Y variable. So when X is equal to 120, as per the line, the fitted value is this. So this is Y1 hat. When X is equal to 150, as per the line, we have this value. So this is Y2 hat. This is the second fitted value. For x equal to 180, this is the third fitted value. So this is y3 hat. For x equal to 210, this is the fourth fitted value. So this is y4 hat. And for x equal to 240, this is the fifth fitted value. So this is y5 hat. Now, as per the intuition that we developed earlier, we are trying to fit this line in such a manner such that the difference between the actual values and the fitted values is as minimum as possible. So we are trying to minimize these differences. So this is the difference between Y1 and Y1 hat. Similarly, here we have this difference, this difference, this difference, this difference. So basically, we are trying to fit our line in such a manner such that these differences are as minimum as possible. And actually, we do have a name for these differences. This difference that you see between Y1 and Y1 hat, this is actually U1 hat. Similarly, the difference that we have between Y2 and Y2 hat, this is U2 hat. This difference is U3 hat. This difference is U4 hat. And the difference over here is U5 hat. So in short, we are trying to fit a line such that the sample errors are as minimum as possible. So this is the intuition we are working with. Now let's try to convert this intuition into something formal. So the first thing that comes to our mind is that we should choose beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat such that the sum of all these sample errors is as minimum as possible such that the sum of your hat is minimized. Okay, so this is the first thing that comes to our mind, okay, that let's choose beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat in such a manner such that the sum of the sample errors is as minimum as possible, okay. Now see, right now you might be thinking that this seems like a very good strategy, but actually this is not a very good strategy. There are some reasons for that and let me tell you a couple of those. The first reason is that if you work with this strategy, then it's possible that you will end up getting multiple lines of best fit which is definitely not a good scenario to be in. Your purpose is to figure out a single line which we can call the best fit. If you are working with a method which is giving you multiple lines of best fit, clearly that method could not be a really good method. So that's one logic why we don't work with this method. I'm not going to explain you in detail over here that how do we get multiple lines of best fit by following this method. It's just that keep this thing in your mind that one of the reasons we are rejecting this method is because it can give us multiple lines of best fit, okay? And the other reason we don't work with this method is that the UI hats that we have over here, these can take negative as well as positive values. And in that scenario, if you're focusing on summation of UI hat, then it can be misleading. So think of it in this manner. I told you in one of my earlier videos that UI hat is equal to YI minus YI hat. 
So basically it is the difference between the actual value and the fitted value where you have to write actual minus fitted and not the other way around. So basically if the actual value is above the fitted value then the error will be positive and if the actual value is below the fitted value then the error is going to be negative. So if you take a look at u1 hat, in the case of u1 hat the actual value is below the fitted value so u1 hat is actually negative. So this is negative. In the case of u2 hat the actual value is above the fitted value so u2 hat is positive. In case of u3 hat the actual value is below the fitted value so u3 hat is going to be negative. Even in the case of u4 hat the actual value is below the fitted value so even u4 hat is going to be negative. And in the case of u5 hat the actual value is above the fitted value so u5 hat is going to be positive. So as you can see in total we have 5 sample errors over here and some of them are positive and some of them are negative. Now if you start focusing on summation of ui hat then it may happen that summation of ui hat appears to be a really small number even if you have some large positive errors and large negative errors. So basically it can happen that the large positive errors may cancel out the large negative errors and the sum appears to be a really small number which is going to be quite misleading right. So we do not work with this strategy though this strategy was looking good. So what we do we actually work with a modification. So the modification that we work with is we choose beta1 hat and beta2 hat such that summation of ui hat square is minimized. So we are not focusing on minimizing the sum of the sample errors. We are focusing on minimizing the sum of the squared errors. Okay. So let me explain you what I mean by this expression. So summation of ui hat square, this means u1 hat square plus u2 hat square plus u3 hat square plus u4 hat square plus u5 hat square. So in our sample data we have only 5 values of the sample errors. So for our sample summation of ui hat square means this and summation of ui hat means u1 hat plus u2 hat plus u3 hat plus u4 hat plus u5 hat. So if you are just summing the errors then you can have a positive and a negative issue but if you square the errors and then you sum the errors then the term is always going to be positive. So if you work with this then we will not have that issue where the positive values could cancel the negative values because we are squaring all the sample errors before the addition. So this is the strategy that we work with and actually this method has a name. This is what we call ordinary least squares method. So ordinary least squares which in short form I'll be calling OLS. So this is what the OLS method is about. So as per this OLS method we have to choose beta1 hat and beta2 hat such that summation of ui hat square is minimized. And this method has some really good properties which we are going to talk about as we proceed further. But for now if you start working with this method then you will not get multiple lines of best fit. You will only get a single line of best fit. And obviously as I told you earlier if you work with this method we will not have the problem of the positive values cancelling the negative values. Okay I hope this much is clear. Now see there is one thing that I want to be really clear about over here. In the OLS method we are minimizing the sum of ui hat square. This is different from this. Many students get confused between these two terms. See in the first term over here we are first squaring the sample errors and then we are adding those. So this is u1 hat square, u2 hat square and you are doing the summation in this manner. In this you are first summing and then squaring the sum. So over here the second term means that you are first adding the errors. And then whatever the sum of the errors is you are squaring the sum of the errors. So we are not working with this. We are not squaring the sum of the errors. We are first squaring the errors and then we are summing it. So be careful with these two expressions. We are working with this one not the other one. Okay. So the purpose of this video was to make you understand the estimation method that we are going to follow to get beta1 hat and beta2 hat. So the method that we are going to follow is the OLS method. Using this method we will have to do some sort of maths. We will have to do a couple of derivations to figure out the formulas for beta1 hat and beta2 hat. 
and there is also a procedure to do that and that's what I'm going to discuss in the next video.